Rolex is seen as the brand that props up the Swiss watch industry and they have just bought luxury retailer Bukhara, further solidifying their dominance in the luxury world. And this is how the market responded. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Adrian and this is simply where I talk about things in the watch world that I find interesting. I know it's been a while and this isn't the video that I thought I'd be doing after such a long break, but I'll be talking about that in my next video. This news is just too epic to ignore and to add some context to Rolex and to really make it clear how big Rolex is and how big this news is, Rolex accounts for over 28% of the entire Swiss watch industry based on value of exports. The number two in this position and the watch brand often seen as the rival to Rolex is Omega at a mere seven and a half percent. So Rolex is big, really big. So Rolex has just bought Bukhara. Bukhara is a luxury retailer selling watches and jewelry. They have a hundred stores dotted around the US and Europe. 53 of them sell Rolex, 48 of them sell Tudor and Rolex and Bukhara have had a relationship for over 90 years. Now why would Rolex buy a multi-brand retailer. Now I spoke to Rolex quite a while ago, back in 2019 I think it was, I spoke to Rolex about moving into retail because this was when so many brands were moving away from the multi-brand retailer and wanting to focus on having their own single brand boutiques. And although in 2019 Rolex said that they wouldn't be moving into retail because they, they, they have a solid AD network, authorized dealer network. So rather than moving into retail, their focus at that time was to improve the authorized, the AD network. At that point they had recently shut nearly 50 ADs because of them, mainly because of them delivering a bad customer experience. The problem is that Rolex ADs aren't owned by Rolex, they're simply dealers. They buy stock and they sell it. And there is a huge difference between an, an authorized dealer and a grade dealer. Typically the difference is the price, not necessarily the service. Now Rolex is epically strict on who they allow to be authorized dealers of Rolex. They have a lot of control over where their products are placed and how their products are placed, how many products are on display and how many are hidden back in the safe. But there is a limit to that control and ultimately the only thing that Rolex can truly do to an authorized dealer to control them is to remove that dealership. The challenge is to get to that point, it's likely there's been at least a year, if not a few years, of that authorized dealer giving bad customer experience, damaging the Rolex brand. Typically, Rolex ADs are known for delivering bad experience, whether it's not really having, but putting you on a wait list. It's not really a wait list. It's just a list to get you out the door or just sniggering at the fact that you've just walked into a shop expecting to be able to buy a product off the shelf. Buying a Rolex is ironically one of the shit parts of Rolex and, and ultimately a really unluxurious experience. The idea of going into a shop to buy a multi thousand pound, often 10,000 pound products, not being able to try it on and then having to make a decision within 24 hours that you actually want it before it gets handed on to the next person in the wait list. It's not a good experience, especially when you've just had to wait months, if not years for a product that you know has been sold to VIP clients because the wait list doesn't really exist. It's more of a list of people, not categorized by time in which you put your name down on the list, but rather categorized by how much money you've spent that year at the AD. Typically a VIP would be someone who spent 100, 200,000 pounds on watches and jewelry within the past 12 months. The annoying thing is that a vast majority of these VIP clients who are spending 100 to 200,000 pounds a year on stuff. They are great dealers with the idea of spending money on less desirable things so that they can end up getting the desirable things and then they start to make a profit on the stuff that they sell. Of course, if you spend 10,000 pounds on a watch, you're not going to lose that 10,000 pounds. You might have to sell it for 6,000 pounds, but you're going to make that 4,000 pounds when you finally get that steel submariner. You get the idea. Suddenly you're making a lot of money flipping watches at the same time as maintaining that high level of spend, allowing you to get more waitlisted watches. So in short, buying a Rolex, something that is seen as uh, the, the icon of luxury is an ironically a very unluxurious experience. So Rolex buying an, an established retail network is a very smart way of them taking full control 
over the customer experience. But of course, when you've got Rolex money, you can be epically smart with your investments. Rather than having Rolex owned retail stores only selling Rolexes and ultimately losing out on money when Joe Bloggs walks off the street to buy a Submariner and realizes they have to wait 12 months for it, go out the store, down the road, to watch the Switzerland and then buy themselves an Omega Seamaster, Rolex have reduced the risk of this investment, this investment into retail, by offering essentially their rival brands. But they've also maximized the money-making opportunity. So now when Joe Bloggs walks off the street to buy their Rolex Submariner, because they've just had a big fat bonus, rather than leaving the store and going down to watch the Switzerland, they simply turn around to the other display and they buy an Omega Seamaster. And that 40 to 50% profit from the Omega Seamaster goes to Rolex. So what does this mean for other retailers who stock Rolex? The official message is that things will carry on as normal. That Rolex are going to continue to support and work with their authorized dealer network. However, if Rolex were to operate like every single other watch brand, IWC, Vacheron, Omega, Grand Seiko, then they will do as those do and, and favor their own brand boutiques. The sexy watches, the good watches, the hype watches, the in-demand watches will go to Bukhara. This, is, this isn't the message, this is my speculation. But I could absolutely see Rolex operating like these other big brands and people like Watches Switzerland will just become places where you buy date justs, oyster perpetuals, and then the sports watches will be sold through Bukhara. Clearly, I'm not the only one who thinks this because the moment Rolex announced this news, the Watches Switzerland share price dropped by 20%. A good example of a high demand watch is my Rolex GMT Master II root beer. So this move by Rolex solidifies their dominance because the main complaints about Rolex are their lack of supply, the bad customer service, and the fact that their watches, often their watches end up on the gray market. Rolex are now in the position, they now have the opportunity to fix these three things, all while creating financial stability in a market that is changing, a market that is losing a little bit of its wind. Rolex no longer needs to sell Rolexes to make money. They make money when you buy Grand Seiko. When you buy an Omega, when you buy their rivals, that's a pretty epic business move. What do you guys think of this? Do you think it's a smart move by Rolex to, uh, to, to future-proof themselves and to improve the perception of the brand from its customer's point of view? Or does Rolex now have too much power? I've got a bit of a rant coming in the next video to explain why I've been quiet for, for such a long time. Uh, but until then, give me a follow on Instagram, at Bark and Jack. Give me a follow on Instagram at Adrian Barker. If you want to check out watch straps and watch accessories, jump over to barkandjack.com. And oh, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, that's down there. And the bell icon. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Missed you guys. Glad to talk to you.